Hi folks, we are The Coalition. We just finished up with a, uh, a, a, I'll call it a pretty raucous rally here for Helena Banana Folks. She, of course, is a candidate for governor. Uh, you know, for folks who routinely watch us know that we're uniquely focused on commerce, our eye, and sort of the, the good times and as well as the shenanigans that go on there. Um, Ms. Folks, as, as a lifetime executive at, a, at literally a Fortune 100 corporation, uh, board governance, uh, fiduciary responsibilities, uh, that's been a major part of your life. Yes, it has. Uh, is it ever appropriate for the chairman of a board, in this case, folks need to know that the uh, Rhode Island governor is automatically the chairman of the RA Commerce Board, but is it ever appropriate to call out to, to use a board member's opinion on a public project as some type of loyalty test, and much less threaten him with firing or threaten him with dismissal because his position may be diametrically opposed at this point in time to the governor? I don't think so at all. I, 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 I am very grateful to, for the people that serve on that board. I spent some time serving under uh, Governor Chafee. It's a lot of hard work with no pay, people really trying to do the right thing. And I know in Mike McNally's case, having just listened to him on the radio, I've not spoken to him, but he's very passionate about making sure that Rhode Island taxpayers get a good deal. And so he didn't seek the limelight. He's been answering questions that I think all of us deserve to know. And I'm disappointed that the governor's calling him out publicly. He should call him into the office and have a private conversation. As a board member, whether it be in this case a quasi-public organization or a private organization, mm -hmm. isn't it your job to essentially, at least even internally or even sometimes hourly, relitigate decisions that have been made? Understand that mm -hmm. this is uh, these are living, breathing decisions. That there's no one point in time. Maybe you could speak to that a little bit. I think this was the governor's big miss here. So 18 months ago, this looked like a very reasonable deal with the cost that they had for the whole comprehensive project, and then costs went up by 50 percent. I think this was a moment in time, and I've heard this from several commerce members, to step back and say, what's the best deal we can get for Rhode Islanders? Mm -hmm. And the governor. Governor, I think, was pushing forward for political reasons instead of stepping back and say, what's the best deal? And I don't think he took an opportunity to lead the way he should have. Governor Raimondo, to her eternal credit, placed a great deal of weight on the membership of the RA Commerce Board. Uh, for many years on and off, you saw different governors use it as sort of a political backwater. In this case, and I know there's a personal uh, relationship here. But in this case, you have, uh, and let's talk about Mr. McNally, you have a gentleman who is a senior executive of Skanska, one of the largest construction companies literally on the planet. Uh, unparalleled expertise uh, in, in these type of deals, if you will. Uh, it, what type of person are you going to appoint to uh, potential vacancies on the Commerce Board? People just like Mike McNally. Mike McNally is a really smart business person. I would happily invest my personal dollars with him, and I think that's the kind of mindset the governor has to have. A person who wants to dig into the data, look at all the information, and say, what's the right decision? If it were my own money, which it is, what would I do? And I think that's the spirit that Mike McNally has approached this problem, and I want to make sure every single member of that Commerce Corporation has the same attitude. Thank you very, very much.